So we're carrying on with this part and we've got it so far, we've got it roughed out with our first tool. And in this video, we're gonna hop into our second roughing tool. So obviously, uh, if you watch the first roughing video, we were not able to get into these sections in here with the larger tool. So we're gonna have to uh, downsize our tool and get rid of that material. So let's hop into that next. So to get started, just gonna get a few things out of the way here. I'm gonna turn this tool path off. Uh, we don't need to be looking at that anymore. And also, uh, we don't need this vice here. It's not really providing us any extra information that's gonna be relevant to our tool path here. So we'll get rid of that. So how we're gonna start here is basically the same way we started the last video. Uh, we're gonna do a stock model creation, which is going to take into account our starting stock plus the tool path that we just did. And then we're going to be making another OptiRough toolpath that's going to then cut that stock model. Now then the big difference here between, between this video and the last one, you know, there's no point in doing the exact same uh, techniques or, or discussion in this video as we did in the last one. Uh, so with this time we're going to look at, you know, controlling more of that uh, OptiRest toolpath. How can we make it cut to where we want it to? And how can we make it not cut in areas that we don't want it to cut? So basically, if it's wasting motion by cutting very little amounts of material, how can we get rid of that stuff from happening? Okay, so step one, as mentioned, is a new stock model. So we'll hop right in here, give this some sort of relevant name. We'll just go with rough one. So our last uh, stock model was called starting stock. So we'll call this one rough one. So that way, if we had multiple roughing operations, multiple roughing stock models, we could go rough one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. Again, there's no rule here for names. Just whatever makes sense to you is all that really matters. Okay, so we'll define some starting stock here. Now we could use the same thing we did last time. We could say, you know, rectangle and then use the stock setup. Uh, however, again, we run into that problem with stock being above the part generating an extra facing tool path. Let's maybe avoid that right from the get go here. So let's just say our starting stock is going to be the stock model we defined previous. Okay, so that should solve all of those problems right from the start here. Uh, I'm going to change the color here just so our stock model is a different color than the last one we made. Let's just pick some color like this lovely uh, greenish color. Green check. Uh, we will do some material selection here. So let's make this glass and we'll, we'll talk about why we want to make this glass in a minute. And then over here in our source operations, we'll take that toolpath that we made, apply it to this stock we've defined, hit OK, and watch this generate. So there's our stock model. You know, this new model is got the green parts where it's been cut, and the gray is the original starting stock that we defined. So there we can see everything that's green has been cut by this previous toolpath. Uh, we did set a material in here, and I said it was glass. This doesn't look very glass-ish right now. And that's because over in our view tab, we don't have material turned on. We turn this on and now our stock model is glass. And what does glass do? It kind of gives it uh, a bit of transparency. So we can still see our stock, but we can also see the underlying part that we're trying to machine. Okay, so carrying on, we got our stock model defined. Let's hop right into our OptiRough toolpath. And we'll use the exact same settings we did before, you know, 15,000 stock everywhere. Let's go ahead and grab the machining geometry again, just by doing the right click, uh, add remaining. So since nothing is selected, everything gets chosen there. Toolpath control will be exactly the same. We're just doing the silhouette boundary offset outside by one inch. And again, we're only going to, we're not going to cut everything outside of this boundary. We're only going to be cutting what it sees as stock within that boundary. Tool, we need to go and get a smaller end mill. Now this slot over here, so luckily in uh, 2022, we've got the uh, ability to still interact with our part on screen. So I can still come over here and go to my home tab, come over here, analyze entity, click on this guy over here, and I can find out that that gap right there is in fact 350 wide. Okay, so I'm still in my parameters over here. I haven't had to close that out as you would have in previous versions. And now we can make some informed decisions on a tool size. Let's go into our library. I'm going to grab the quarter inch bull end mill, uh, 30 thou corner red. So for speeds and feeds, again, what we're going to be doing is uh, using this little app. This is called FS Wizard. And again, this is a, this is the free version here, and you can get this to run in your Chrome browser or any browser for that matter. Uh, or you can get it in the Google Play Store or iTunes Store. There's a free version and a paid version. Paid version obviously has uh, more goodies inside of it. Uh, but for this example here, the free version is uh, just fine. So basically, I've defined my material as a uh, stainless steel. Defined my roughing tool as this uh, quarter inch end mill. Defined my cut. I'm going to say I'm not going to cut any deeper than 0.3. I'm not sure yet how deep I'm going to cut, but I know I'm not going to be going much deeper than that. And I'm doing a 20% cut, and I'm applying chip thinning in here. 
And you can see here I'm getting values here. So 220 feet per minute and a 0 0.0027 uh, chip load per tooth. So I'll plug those numbers in. So 220 feet per minute and 0 0.0027 on the chip load. And I will not turn on radial chip thinning in here because this number that I've been given from the app is already factoring in chip thinning. Okay, let's just maybe update this number here to something reasonable like 11. And we'll carry on with our toolpath. Now, again, if you want good simulation, maybe uh, make sure you get a good holder here. Uh, let's go with this one here. Looks good. And stick out. I told the uh, calculator that I had 7 eighths of stick out. So I'll input that value there, 7 eighths. Here's our stock definition. Same way we did in the uh, the previous toolpath. Um, we're using one other operation and we're using the defined stock model that we just made. Rough one, not the first guy. We're using this second guy. Carrying on down uh, again. So here I said in my my uh, FS wizard calculator, that I'm doing 20% step over. And step downs, I'm going to say I'm going to type in 100% quarter of an inch and I'll see how that splits up. We'll come back and look at that a little bit later. Uh, step up if it needs to, we will allow a step up in here. We'll come back and look at this again a little later. And we do have our micro lifts turned on, back feed rates at 400. So a lot of these parameters are coming from the old OptiRough that we made. They carry over. Steep shallow is fine. Yeah, we don't want to cut any deeper than that just because we don't want to hit our vise. Linking parameters, we'll use the exact same linking that we did here. Same with our arc filtering. This all carries over from the previous toolpath. Planes should all be good to go. Coolant should already be turned on. It's not, so that's good that we caught that one. And we'll go ahead and create this toolpath. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's doing probably a lot more than we would expect. We only had material left over in these slots, but we're getting a lot of toolpath out in here and a lot of repositioning going on. And let's just hop into verify here and see what happens. So this is not good. This is not what we want to see in our verify. Um, we're seeing our original starting block. Um, I don't want to have to replay this toolpath just so that I can watch what this toolpath does every single time. We're going to be doing a lot of back and forth in and out of this toolpath. There's no point in having to watch this thing cut that block every single time. So we've got this stock model defined. We want to start our verification from this stock model. And that's done up here in our simulator options. You just come down here and say we want to use a stock model. From the pull down, since we've got multiple options here, we pick the stock model we want to use. Hit OK. Let's launch back into Verify. And this time, we're going to see the appropriate starting stock for this toolpath. OK, so let's go ahead and click Play here. We'll play through, and we'll see what this does. So we're getting yellow cuts in here. Yellow cuts along here, and we've got something happening over here and there as well. Now, think back to the previous videos I said, on this guy here, we're going to do a semi finish and then a finish up. So I don't really want to be machining this more. Um, I want the next toolpath that's going to be focused on this area to deal with that. I don't want this roughing toolpath to deal with that at all. So we need to refine that section of the toolpath. This guy here, we need to avoid as well. We're going to come back to this part and uh, do some. Let me close this down. We're going to be doing some drilling and some milling in here later on. So I don't want this toolpath attacking this material at all. So let's hop back into our parameters and see what we can fix up here. So we'll go back up to the very, very top. And on our toolpath control page, nice little button here, skip pockets. Okay, so skip pockets. Uh, this is a pocket. So this hole counts as a pocket. You know what? Skip them all. If any pocket is on here, I don't want to machine it. Now, your parts, this might not be the catch all that works for you. You might need to do this guy over here. And say, don't go in any pockets that are smaller than, you know, a uh, half inch or whatever. For me, this is going to work on this part. So I'm just going to click on that guy and we'll carry on. Oh, maybe let's just, uh, let's just confirm that that's going to do what we want it to do. So there you can see that that helix is in fact gone now. And we're not machining that hole at all. Okay, back in and fixing up these guys out here. So on our stock page, what we've got uh, an option for is adjustments to the remaining stock. Use as computed, results will be what you see on screen right now. Ignore small cusps. So basically what that does is even though the material is here, what we're going to do is we're going to feed the toolpath material that's inside of that. And then obviously the flip side here, mill small cups is we would give the toolpath more material than what is actually there. Okay, so the, all I want to do is this guy right here. 
And what I'm going to say for ignoring is I'm going to say we'll do this twice here. Let's say 15,000 for now, and we'll see how much cleanup that actually does. So I said ignore 15,000 cusps, and it's cleaned up a lot, but we're still getting more toolpath out on these edges, which we don't want. This stuff out here is just transitions. That's why it's that brownish color. But everything blue is a cut. So we're getting cuts in here that we don't want. So let's increase that some more. And let me do let me do this value over here. Let me do 30. Let me do 32. Now, why did I pick 32? Was it just some random number? No. So I picked a value that was bigger than the corner radius of my tool. And basically, that's a no-go in OptiRough. So your limit for this ignoring is the radius of your tool. So the maximum amount that I can ignore here is going to be 31. I think 30 would have worked just fine, but uh, 31 is the biggest number I can put in. And we'll have a look and see what that does to our toolpath. And now we're getting, you know, toolpath where the I want the toolpath to be only on those slotted sections. Now, there's other ways we could have handled that as well. We could have, you know, encased some geometry here and forced it into these sections. Uh, but I'm lazy and I don't like drawing stuff. I don't uh, I don't have to. So I went this route. So let's actually uh, let's hop into a verify here again and we'll have a look at this refined toolpath and have a look at the resulting motions here. So play through and again, we didn't see much of the cutting motion, but we can see where the yellow is now and it's only in those slotted sections and we're not wasting time remachining these little bumps out here that we're going to again, we're going to get that later with a semi finishing operation. And we're not getting into this hole over here, which we're going to be tackling with a, a drilling operation later. So overall, much better now with with the code. Uh, it's it's cutting only where we want. Now there is some some uh, some back and forth here that we could probably fix as well. So you notice here, it comes through in the first depth cut, and then it transitions over to here, and does that same cut on the other side or the same level cut on the other side. It then comes back, does a step up, and it's doing you know flip flopping back and forth on these step ups. And then it's again stepping down over here, transitioning over, doing that same level, repositioning back. And we can do some some adjusting here with our optimized step ups and step downs. So we'll change that to next closest and we'll have a look at the difference here. So they were cutting through at that first depth, but we do transition across and do that same cut. But now we're stepping up right away and finishing all the step ups before we transition back over and do those step ups. So we fixed that, but that we're still going to get back and forth here because we're doing cuts on the same level. And there's there's no way we can, uh, uh, even the step downs is not going to affect that. It basically, it wants to finish each level before it moves on. And if this was a big deal to you, so again, if we're cutting one part, for cutting one part, your cycle time is not going to be the killer here. So if you, you know, this extra transition, it might cost you, you know, five seconds of your cycle time overall. So if you're cutting a million parts, yeah, let's cut those five seconds out and save a lot of money on a million parts. If we're cutting one part, five seconds of cycle time does not matter at all. Um, if this thing runs for 15 minutes on the machine versus versus 12 minutes, that's not going to make or break you on making money on a part like this. Your setup time, your programming time, your inspection time, that's all going to take hours compared to the, the small runtime of, of one piece. So again, this is not something we would probably try and tackle in a, a one-off part, but if you know if you want to get into good habits and and being able to address these on a one-off parts just just like that, then these are things you need to look at um, uh, even when maybe you don't really have to look at them. Okay, so what can we do here? Let me go into a top view and we could do something very basic like just do a little rectangle over here and on this toolpath, whoops, uh, we would come in, let's come back to our, our toolpath control and add this boundary in and what would happen now is we would only cut this one half of the part here once this regenerates so now we're only cutting this side over here so let's run through this step down step up step down step down and then obviously what we could do here is we would just duplicate this this toolpath number th number four copy paste parameters and we go into a top view over here and do the exact same thing. I would do a rectangle over here. Geometry, toolpath control, get rid of this, add in this new guy. 
and then rebuild the operation. And what we'll see here is a toolpath only on the right side. So we'll have one toolpath on the left, which is optimized to, you know, not transition back and forth, and then one over on the right side. Uh, again, not having to transition back and forth. It's just going to cut the one side at a time. Now, again, is it worth the extra work? I don't know. On one part, probably not. Uh, on a million parts, absolutely. You know, you, know, you want to reduce as much uh, wasted motion as possible. Okay, so again, we're getting pretty long in this video here. Again, I'm not meant to, uh, or not meaning to go super, super long on these videos. I'm just trying to cover a bunch of different options here as we go through them. Now, obviously, again, we've mentioned this before, you probably don't need to go into great detail into optimizing this program to be as efficient as possible, uh, given that you're doing one part. But again, I just want to go through this and talk about things that we don't always get a chance to talk about uh, in some of these videos here. Okay, so parts all good. Um, this is, at this point, roughing is complete. And I think it's a good time to wrap this video up and we'll dive into some more concepts in uh, uh, the next video.